Uh, Nobel Prize in Economics for 2020 has been uh, announced today, a couple of hours back actually it was announced and uh, three uh, professors have been uh, awarded this prize. Uh, ben Bernanke who is now with the Broking Institute in Washington DC. He was uh, chairman of the Federal Reserve, a very famous person actually. And then uh, Douglas Diamond, who is with the University of Chicago, Booth School of Business. And uh, Phillips uh, Divig, who is uh, with Washington University. And they have been awarded uh, together, you know, it, it, I mean, they will be sharing the prize. Each one of them will get one third of the prize money. <clears throat> and they have been awarded uh, for research on banks and financial crisis. And we will see more about their work and uh, the contribution to understanding of banking and, and financial crisis. Here are the three gentlemen. Uh, ben Bernanke is, is the famous one. I didn't know the other two. Well, I knew a bit about Douglas Diamond a bit, but uh, about Philip Daiviga, I had no clue about. Uh, ben Bernanke, of course, is very famous. He has been uh, uh, the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve for a long time, I think. Uh, he was there for a couple of years, I think, over, over 10 years, I guess. Yeah, um, so what the Nobel Committee uh, had said about them is that the laureate's insights have improved our ability to avoid both serious crises and expensive bailout. I beg to differ with that, actually, because Ben Bernanke was made the chairman of the Federal Reserve in 2006. And in 2008, we had a, a crisis. The government let Lehman Brothers collapse. There was, uh, I mean, that decision is, uh, yeah, many people think that wasn't a good decision. They should have bailed out Lehman Brothers and that could, may have um, helped in avoiding the financial crisis. So, yeah, but yeah, the, the, re the research they have done in, in 80s and 70s and 90s, uh, is considered to be quite useful in understanding banking and the role of banking in financial crisis and, and uh, why banks should not be allowed to fail, also not be allowed to, uh, to, to, to just um, shut down, right? That wasn't the case, by the way, in 2008 when Lehman Brothers was, and many other banks were led to, to collapse, okay? A bit more about, uh, you know, this is what I've taken from the website for the Nobel, uh, the Swiss bank, uh, the Nobel committee website. Okay, so their discoveries improved how, how society deals with financial crisis. This year's laureates in economic sciences, Ben Bernanke, Douglas Diamond and Philip Dybig have significantly improved our understanding of the role of banks in the economy, particularly during financial crisis. An important finding in the research is why avoiding bank collapses is vital. Yeah, um, so yeah, so basically the research is all about uh, role of banking in and financial crisis and how financial crisis can boy, avoid it and why banks should not be allowed to collapse uh, and what exactly is the impact uh, when banks are allowed to collapse. So all that, um, so they have done a lot of research on that and hence this prize has been awarded to them. It's a bit of a question whether Ben Bertanke should get that. I'm sure many people now are tweeting about about uh, the role of Ben Bernanke and whether he should have been awarded this prize or not. Um, all right, a bit more about their work. For the economy to function, savings must be channeled through investment. I've taken these sentences from the website, okay? So it, these are not my sentences. However, there is a conflict here. Savers want instant access to the money in case of the unexpected outlays, while businesses and homeowners need to know they um, will not be forced to repay their loans prematurely, which is, which is all about banking, right? Uh, you save the money in the bank, the banks lends out the money to businesses and, and to people to buy mortgages. But there is this condition that businesses will not be forced to pay out money, right? You, if you get it for five years, you will have to pay the loan back after five years. 
right? So there must be some guarantee. But the problem is that uh, the savers, right? People who save the money in the bank, they might go to the bank and ask the money uh, from from it, right? And if all of them, all the savers wanted want the money at the same time, then the bank uh, is in trouble and the bank will collapse, right? So instant access to money in an unexpected outlay will cause trouble to the bank. Uh, so that for that, people need to trust on the banking system, right? Otherwise, they will there will be a panic. So Peter, uh, so Di Mr. Diamond and uh, Dybrick uh, have shown how banks offer an optimal solution to this problem. Uh, and it, it goes on saying that by acting as intermediary that accept depositors from many savers, banks allow depositors to act, access their money when they wish while also offering long-term loans to borrow. So you have a diversified set of savers. That means not all of them will need the money at the same time. So banks have got enough time to you know pay back the money to the savers when they need it. But at the same time, they can also lend the money to businesses. Right. This is quite actually trivial, right? Is, is it something that uh, we did not know, right? I think this is quite trivial, but I don't know why something like this um, deserves a Nobel Prize, but that, that's just my opinion. In, in fact, it's it's a debate whether Nobel Prize should be given to economists. You know, are they like real scientists? Okay, so this is a pictorial uh, representation of this problem where, you know, you have a bank which takes money from a lot of borrowers. Some borrowers need instant access, some borrowers may not need instant access to money. And then banks uh, give the loan to a variety of economic participants, for, for example, to mortgages, to uh, real estate companies, to businesses, to small businesses, large businesses, to governments, financial institutions. So there is a diversification. And with this diversification, the optimal solution is reached. That, that's, that means banks will not run out of liquidity otherwise there will be a liquidity crisis which will result in a financial crisis if a large number of savers simultaneously run to the bank to withdraw their money the rumor might become a self-fulfilling prophecy a bank's run occurs and the bank collapses which is what happened in 2008 when many people rushed to the bank to withdraw money because they were not very confident about the bank and uh, it caused more damage so a rumor a rumor about a bank could cause damage not just to the bank but to the entire financial system because people will simply run to withdraw money from the atm um, and what they have recommended in the study is that uh, these dangerous dynamics can be prevented through the government providing deposit insurance and acting as a lender of last resort to the banks in many countries in the world, uh, the government provide insurance to the depositor to a certain amount, right? not to the entire amount, uh, that your money is, is secure and in case the bank fails, the government will pay back the money to the saver. Right? So that is a result of, uh, of the research that these people have done. And uh, you know, the lender of acting as a lender of last resort which is you know either the central bank or the government in many developed country you know uh, deposits are insured not in all countries by the way and lender of last last resort is either the government or the central bank or both that means there's someone to rely upon right you can't just uh, keep your money all your life savings with a private bank which could collapse any day and you lose everything that's not uh, Okay, so this is a pictorial representation again. I've taken that from the Nobel Prize, uh, the Nobel Committee's website. That lot of, there is a panic. A lot of people are trying to withdraw money, and you know there is a collapse of the bank. Diamond demonstrated how banks perform another societal important function, and inter as intermediaries between many savers and borrowers, banks are better suited to assessing borrower, borrowers' credit worthiness and ensuring that loans are used for good investment. This is uh, very well known to you know anybody who knows a bit of a banking that banks do uh, due diligence on the customers to assess their credit worthiness. That means whether they can repay the money or not. Because of the past transaction, you know, historical data with other customer, they're able to 
you know build models credit risk models to assess credit worthiness of customers and uh, with that you know the money uh, of the savers is then used for proper investment a good investment without the banks doing that it will not be done and then economic activities will not be uh, accelerated with the uh, investment right proper investment otherwise you will not never know as to who is credit worthy who is not and then ben bernanke who is a third person analyzed the great depression of the 1930s the worst economic crisis in modern history among other things he showed how bank runs were a decisive factor in the crisis becoming so deep and prolonged when the banks collapsed the valuable information about borrower was lost and could not be recreated quickly ben bernanke was uh, actually the chairman of the fed in 2008 when the crisis happened he was already there for 2 years uh, he might have done a bit more to avoid that crisis but some people also think that he did well after the crisis unfolded because the crisis was, uh, did not prolong for a long, long time uh, unlike in 1930s the great depression which continued for a decade long the financial crisis of 2008 it it continued it prolonged just for 2 years by 2010 i think we were we were back right the economy was back to normal near normal um and for the last 10 years banks have been doing very well actually because uh because of regulations in place because of you know all kinds of checks and balances that now governments ensure that banks uh, do on a regular basis especially the stress testing you know activities that banks are supposed to do especially the big banks uh, are supposed are required to do in the US and in european country and maybe ben bernanke has a role to uh, had a role to uh, you know come up with this sort of uh, requirement yeah. but these things have not been just mentioned in the in the in the statement from the nobel committee